Hey guys, it's Adam in the AeroWorks Workshop and today we're going to give you a little overview of where we're at. We're about day four or five on the Super Duty build. We took delivery last Thursday. We started on creating it on Friday and worked through the weekend kind of doing some inventory. And all week, this week, we've been working on pretty much the fuselage. So let's go ahead and take a look around the shop and see what we've completed. All right here you can see we've got the fuselage bottom. We're just finishing up a couple items on. We'll have some detailed photos and assembly of this as we went through uh, out the week here following this intro. You can see we've got the tail skid mount on there. We've got all the angles riveted in. And uh, there's our flap mount is in there. You'll see later in the video we have a couple rivets that we had to redo because we had three layers that we had to go through and unfortunately we only made it through two. So I went ahead and drilled those two rivets out there and on the opposite side and actually redid those. We've got the rear seat uh, brackets here, the channels, those are uh, all riveted in now. We're just waiting to put on the side skins. And then if we take a look over here, we've got both left and right side skins all riveted up. All the angle iron has been riveted. Uh, actually, not angle, iron, but the angle, the aluminum angle has been uh, riveted in. If it was iron, that would be a real heavy plane. We've got that done. We have also have the top skin completely riveted as well, minus the uh, portions that you have to leave off. So we're going to continue working on that. Uh, currently, we are actually working on the, uh, the front, the forward frame on the fuselage. This is going to be the the actual uh, rear mounts for the wings. We're going to get the angle iron uh, put into here and get this top channel completely riveted up today and ready to go into the uh, fuselage and get the left and right sides on. So that's where we're at guys uh, and we'll just continue on with the build. Well, we started off earlier in the week, my son and I, and that was basically uh, attaching all the angle to the bottom of the fuselage. This was pretty simple to do, um, just uh, you know, lining up the Clecos and uh, putting rivets in all the holes and riveting them on. So once we got done with that, we went ahead and laid out some of the, uh, the first uh, angle that goes up in the rear uh, fuselage, just temporary Cleco in them in just to kind of get a feel for where things are. Here I am uh, actually uh, back drilling the V brace on the horizontal tail uh, rib. Um, and then I, once I got done with that and deburred the holes, I went ahead and primed it. Uh, I had already sent all the steel parts out to powder coat. And since this skid piece here uh, was not going to be seen, I didn't really worry about that piece. So I just went ahead and uh, primed it and painted it. So waited for all that stuff to dry. And then uh, we went right into uh, getting ready to assemble that. Now we had to bump up the size per the plan so I had to go ahead and drill out this tail skid piece, put it on the drill press and that was a pretty easy uh, job to do. Again the, the Super Duty comes with all of the holes pre-drilled. There are a couple holes, a couple parts that you do have to back drill or drill but for the most part I'd say 98-99% of the whole aircraft is match hole to the original size that it needs to be. It's not one size under, like a Vans aircraft starts out. You're actually starting with the holes uh, that you're going to be riveting. Now, not to say that you don't have to still deburr and clean up the holes here and there. That's definitely gonna be a given when you have CMC machinery doing the work for you. Here I'm starting the, uh, the riveting process, getting that V-brace uh, riveted to the, uh, the back of the rib there, the horizontal tail rib and then just finishing that up and uh, getting that part set aside, ready to install into the fuselage. And here we've got the uh, bottom of the aircraft flipped over, just finishing up some uh, rivets that we missed on the first uh, day of riveting there. Just some more angle in the front that can be uh, completed riveting, so we went ahead and did that. You can see the uh, two large triangular uh, shaped hole areas there on the left and right. Those are going to be for an angle that goes on uh, later 
uh, in the build and actually that front whole row of holes gets left unriveted as that's where it's going to attach to the forward fuselage. So again here just going through catching a few uh, rivets that we missed. Uh, we'll kind of speed this up here. This is the flap actuator bracket. Um, we went ahead and uh, got that mounted. And when I was doing that, I noticed that I had missed a rivet uh, on the third layer of skin there. So that can happen when you've got normally just two layers. You're going through a skin into a rib. But in this case, I was going skin through the lingeron into another piece. And unfortunately, the, uh, the rivet uh, mushroomed out between the th second and third pieces. So just went ahead and drilled those two out, one on each side and cleaned up the hole and re-rivet it and everything was fine. I think we'll show you that later in the video. Here, just finishing up the flap, flap actuator riveting. Again, a whole bunch of uh, rivets holding that piece in there. It's got to be a pretty strong piece. And if you wonder where all those tips go when you, when you click off the blind rivets, well, they hit the floor. And I just simply picked up one of these magnetic brooms. It makes real uh, quick and easy work in the workshop. Also fun for the kids to do if you need to give them a project to do. Here we're just flipping over the bottom fuselage uh, after doing that final riveting on the bottom. And here I'm going to center punch that tail skid uh, eyelet. That uh, There's a small bolt that goes through the bottom skid to, for a tie down. And the skin is not uh, pre-drilled for that. So we had to mark that up. Here I'm using a step drill. Uh, I had already used a micrometer to measure the size of the bolt sticking out of the... Uh, the welded uh, part and I matched it up with my step drill here and took it down to the third notch and it was pretty much a perfect fit. You notice I have the 2x4 under there so that we don't, uh, you know, flare out the uh, aluminum skin on the bottom. It gives us something solid to, to drill against. And here I'm just test fitting that and everything fit perfect. So I went ahead and started clecoing everything up and uh, got ready to rivet that a little bit later in the day. And again, just cleaning up the holes after drilling. You know, you want to make sure that your holes are nice and clean. That gets a nice, tight fit between two surfaces when you're when you're riveting and clecoing. You don't want any little burrs, any little uh, any rims of the holes stuck in there. You want it nice and flat so you can get a nice tight uh, connection there. And again, here we're just clecoing that in. And uh, a couple on the bottom and a couple on the side, and that, that part's pretty much ready to go. Uh, I believe we held off just for a little bit until we made sure we had everything else lined up. Right here, we're just finishing up some bottom riveting uh, after putting in those uh, horizontal tail brace pieces. Uh, you definitely leave out the holes at the very end because you've got some a lot more bracing that goes on back there But uh, where the two ribs are and the whole bottom there up to there that can all be uh, Finished riveted and you can see the the hole sticking out at the bottom here my father-in-law He's uh, helping out first time uh, using aircraft tools, but we were working on that uh, rear fuselage uh, Flange this is where some of the control linkages control cables and such go through and he was helping me deburr and taking his hand at the rivet gun. So here we've got those two uh, Ford uh, angle pieces in and we're going to go ahead and flip the fuselage over. We've got them cleco a couple spots. We're going to do some final clecoing on the bottom and then go ahead and rivet across the bottom of those two pieces. Uh, as you'll see here in just a moment. So here I'm just, uh, you can see a couple Clico sticking up from the underside, but we want to take those out and then re Clico from the top down. So we're holding the piece down uh, right side up. And then I just start basically going through and uh, putting rivets in, you know, every other one, every couple you want to do that, keeping the skins real nice and tight. Here again, using that Milwaukee uh, rivet gun, um, excellent uh, tool. I, I'm really starting to like this thing. Uh, you know, it seems to have unlimited battery life, uh, at least, you know, at least a whole day's worth of work of rivets. And when it does run low on battery, the nice thing is you don't get like a half pull. It, it just stops working. So you're not going to get a rivet that gets pulled halfway and then you got to drill it out or something. 
All right, there you can see I'm just doing some more hole cleanup and then go ahead and finish up the riveting on the bottom skin there. Now, if you notice that access hole on the upper right there, that is really the only access hole you'll have when the fuselage is complete. So you'll want to make sure and uh, get everything that's difficult to do wiring wise, things like that in the rear fuselage before you close that up because getting back there after the fact is going to be a little tricky. So again here we're just finishing up some riveting uh, on the bottom skin. Uh, here my father-in-law and I are actually riveting the side skins to the angle and we had pretty good team effort going on here. I would uh, clico the parts, he would follow ahead or lead ahead of me and put the rivets in and uh, I would come behind and then do all the riveting behind him and then remove the clicos and he would go back and put the rivets in those holes. So it's always nice when you have a partner to do a project like this. You know, of course you can do it yourself, but having a, an extra set of hands uh, to not only experience the build, but also give you, uh, hand you tools and, and be part of the build is pretty cool to do. All right, this part here, this is the baggage back. It's also the back of the uh, jump seat. And I would say it probably took just under two hours to complete this part. That's from reviewing the drawings, finding all the parts, cleaning up the parts, uh, clicoing them together, riveting, uh, removing the clicos, and so on. Uh, again, here I had a little help. My daughter stopped in for a sec, and she was handing me rivets and things, and I was able to knock this out. By the time I got it set up, it only took about an hour to get the actual part made. And, uh, you know, one more page knocked off the books and one more thing accomplished, ready to start the next day. All right, here's some more uh, aluminum angle. This is, uh, these pieces here are doublers that double up the back side of the front frame where the wing attaches to. And it's always a good idea to round off those sharp corners. It just gives the part a little bit more rigidity. It takes away the chance of a sharp corner uh, that can crack down the road, and uh, we don't want that. So you can see there where I just put uh, rivets down the front arm there. On the back side is that angle iron, or again, not angle iron, angle, aluminum angle, that uh, was riveted on the back side. There we are right there, popping a rivet in. And that just is providing a bunch more strength to the back of that uh, thinner aluminum uh, structure. Again, the plans here call for riveting the bottom, front, and back of this uh, angle here. And, of course, we leave the top undone because that's where the uh, top skin is going to go to. So last day of the week, we had uh, uh, more family over, and we were able to get these side skins lifted up. Again, they're pretty flimsy when they're just by themselves, but once you get them clicked on to the substructure and start stiffening things up, everything comes together nicely. So let's take a look at what we completed in week one of the Super Duty build. Well, hey Zenith fans, it's Adam here in the AeroWorks workshop and we're gonna do a summary video of what we have accomplished in just one week building our Zenith 750 Super Duty. Now we took uh, delivery of the kit last Thursday uh, got unboxing it on Thursday afternoon. Friday was kind of a inventory day, looking through the parts. And then Saturday we started uh, trying to get some of those parts assembled. We've been working throughout the week. And you can see here behind me what we've been able to accomplish in just the first week. So I'm going to go ahead, and go ahead and take you a little tour around and show you what we're working on and where we're going to be heading uh, in next week's video. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we did this week. All right, so here is the rear fuselage. This is actually, uh, a lot of people think this is the front seat. This is actually the back seat area, the bench seat, or they call it the jump seat. These two rails here are the bottom of the rear bench, and this is actually, uh, the back there is called the baggage back, or it's actually like the back of the uh, jump seat. So this portion here, and these lines here, along with this little L-shaped groove here, will mate up with the front fuselage, which consists of the two front seats, the floorboards, and this rail system right here, this angle. So this angle right here will mate up 
with this here. It'll actually go into there, and then it will be riveted along this line here, tying the front and back together. Now, not only is that angle going to be riveted there, but the entire bottom, which is a thicker skin, we've got gussets here. That's going to be riveted. And then we're going to have the powder-coated roll cage assembly that comes out and down will be tied into the firewall over here. So that kind of ties the front and back fuselages together. Again, we've got the back baggage uh, area that's just temporary clecoed in. We're not starting the riveting yet on the fuselage until we get our uh, front um, rear wing assembly completed. We had some questions about the bolts yesterday. Um, I looked at the E drawings as well as the regular drawings and they didn't indicate any washers and I was trying to follow the exact uh, drawings and if you see here they don't show any washers shown here. Um, you could interpret this as a washer but this is also a, a lock nut so I went ahead and did uh, it without washers only to find out um, that the bolt was a little long and I ran out of thread. So it's a simple fix. It just means put a washer under these or a washer under the nut in the back or both and torque them down to the respective AN bolt settings and we should be fine. So again, a lot accomplished in the first week. I had a little bit of help, mostly did everything myself. I did have uh, my father-in-law was helping install some of the rivets uh, in the holes as I went along and riveted behind. And uh, we had a little bit of help putting the sides on, obviously, because you want to have help. Otherwise, it's like holding a wet noodle up in the air. But you can see we've got the entire fuselage left and right and bottom sides together. We will be uh, completing the top after we finish that front uh, archway there that supports the rear of the wing. I had already completed the rudder kit a while back, you can see that there, that's been in my shop as inspiration because, you know, it's, it's a good place to start. If you're not sure if you want to build one of these kits, you can uh, purchase a rudder kit like this or you can attend one of the rudder workshops down at Zenith. Um, I don't know what they charge or if they even charge for the workshop, but the kit itself for the tail is about $400 plus shipping. If you need it shipped to you, you can also pick it up at Zenith. But that's a good way to see if you have the uh, the follow through to complete an airplane. It's got most of the skills you're going to need to build the whole plane. It goes together with the blind rivets. You've got spars and ribs and skins and brackets to put on there. So if you can do this, you can do all of this. And that's kind of where we're at now. One note I will say, and I talked to Sebastian about this, this was the crate that my fuselage kit came in. And uh, as we started going through inventory, I noticed that it didn't seem like there was a lot of skin material. I mean, I had a couple larger pieces up here and some over here on the ground, but there didn't seem to be a lot of pieces. And I thought, you know, I better check under this cardboard here. And sure enough, there's a bunch of skins all wrapped up flat all the way to the back. So be very careful when you're walking in what you think is your empty crate and that you don't mess up your skins or you don't accidentally throw anything out uh, because that's most of the wing skins are in that container there. I talked a little bit about organization earlier in one of the videos and you know this is kind of how I've been rolling here. We've got rivets and bins and we've got clecos and bins and we're starting to collect some of the small parts. Um, you know bushings and hardware and things like that. And it's important to kind of keep everything organized um, as you go along to the build. That way you'll be able to find everything in a timely fashion. And as you get done with one print you can kind of move ahead to the next one and see what am I going to need in this next section. And you can lay them out. Here I picked up some shelves at Sam's Club. We've got all the parts here laid out. Ribs and stiffeners and brackets and things. So everything is organized on shelves. As we get closer to each of those sections, we'll actually lay those out in their respective build portions. And uh, get them organized that way. Here we've got a few more parts still left in the box. We have the inventory. We're going through that right now. So we'll be... Uh, working on that here this next week. Now, as, what we're, as far as what we're going to be doing next week, um, we're going to be really working a lot in this uh, rear fuselage here. There's still a lot to do, even though it looks quite a bit done. Uh, the structure itself is done, but we have things like the control rod bushings and things to put in here. We have, actually, we have all of our control rods and all of our steel parts are currently out at powder coat. So those should be back next week. We'll be able to finish the control rods in here. 
Um, also the frame, the top frame that goes on top, as well as the rudder pedals, which go in here. So your rudder pedal uh, bars and arms that go in there, that'll all be done with the parts that are out for powder coat. And then we'll be primarily working here in the rear fuselage, putting in all the rear seat armrests, the shelves. There's a lot of parts that go in all these holes here that stiffen all this skin up to make it really rigid. Uh, we'll be putting the top on and then stiffening up the roof and really getting this whole back section tidied up and finished. We do have a wire to run that's going to run along the channel to the back. That's for the uh, elevator trim. Um, we'll probably put some uh, conduit of some type in there, a small flexible conduit, split loom or something, just so we can run some wires back for lights and things. So that's all going to be done this next week. So um, there might not be as much visibly done, but we'll be doing a lot to really beef up this rear section with the goal of trying to mate the front and rear fuselages together. So that's where we're going to be going. Hope you like the progress so far. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for next week as we continue the build of the Zenith CH750 Super Duty.